<laughs> Thanks, everybody. Uh, thank you so much. That was so nice, all that clapping. I'm Ricky Camilleri. Welcome to Build. Uh, when the collapse of civilization comes, which it will, probably sooner rather than later, how will you fare? How will you take care of not just yourself, but others as well? The new Netflix film Bird Box, starring Sandra Bullock and directed by the great Suzanne Beer, asks these questions while also crafting a tense, horrifying thriller with great performances all around. Let's take a look. It's story time. You know, when I was young, we had a boat. And every single summer, we'd take it to the lake. Oh, no! And there was love. Oh, and there was family. And it was a wonderful time. We were just driving. Oh, my God. And then she saw something. What's wrong with you? Say no virus or a chemical attack. It is real evil. If you see it, that takes on the form of your worst fears. Every contact we have had with the outside has brought us death. No one's coming for us. Is anyone there? Hello? We have a place. It's safe here. The fastest way to get here is by the river. The birds will warn you whenever those things are around. We are going on the trip. Never take off your blindfold. We will make it. You take this and you go. Please don't take my children. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. No, 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 no. Open your eyes. Please don't take my children. Do you hear that? Everybody from Bird Box, please welcome Colson Baker, Rosa Salazar, Lil Ray, Suzanne Beer, Danielle, and Danielle McDonald. Thanks, everybody. Hello. What up, what up, what up? Uh, hey. Thanks so much for being here, and thank you for making this movie. I love watching your films. You're such a wonderful filmmaker, and you always hit it out of the park every time you go out to do it. Uh, I thank really, you. Re Yeah, I really related to this film, because I feel like every time I open my eyes in the outside world, I also want to die right now. <laughs> <laughs> Good way to start things. <laughs> Yeah, let's start it off light. Let's just get into it. Uh, what, what drew you to this story, though? What made you want to make this film? It's really funny that you say that, because, because I read it seven years ago, as did Sandra Bullock, and none of us kind of felt any reason to do it seven years ago. And kind of last year, we both felt a strong reason to do it. <laughs> and that strong reason was, oh my god, every time I open my eyes, it's worse. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> Had you, I mean, I'm looking back at your films, you know, your films always are, not always, excuse me, but so what you're so phenomenal at is these really tense, uh, close dramas between people that always culminate in a moment of violence or some sort of horror that the emotions, I think of like Brothers, where it is a tense drama that turns into something almost has a violent peak to it. Is that something that, is that a reason that you think you were sort of perfect for, to direct this film? Did it feel like it was in your wheelhouse? Because I'm so intrinsic violent, um, no. <laughs> no. I think drama that culminates in a moment yes, of destruction. Yes. No, for yeah. sure. No, but I think I'm. I think I've. I've always had a kind of um, e extreme interest in something which is um, whatever you can say, like the dark side of any character, like uh, people who are essentially good, but somehow gets involved in something which drives them to do something which is not good or violent or whatever. I've always been very fascinated by this and this is an extreme version of it. Um, you guys are kind of all, tr I don't want to give too much away. The fun of watching the movie is not knowing what is next, but I can say that you guys are for the most part trapped in a house together for a, a large part of the film. Uh, a number of great actors outside of you guys are in that house as well. You have John Malkovich, you have Sandy B. Uh, what was it like? They see. <laughs> Uh, what was it like shooting all of those idea. scenes together? Was that, even though they're tense scenes, were you guys all having a good time hanging out in this house? 
I think for the most part, um, it, it was both, right? Because it, it felt like we was really in this. Because, I mean, the, the house was really taped up. You couldn't see. I, I didn't, You don't know what the weather is outside. You don't know if it's still sunny outside. You don't know if it's nighttime yet. Even when we took our breaks, it was still in that house. <laughs> so were you guys in a real house or was it a studio? No, we were in a real house. And it was eerily... It's haunted. Similar, actually. Yeah. 100% haunted. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. has a cool story John behind it. Manson. Yeah. yeah, he stayed there for a bit, so we were all feeling it. Oh, it's, it. one, of the, it's, it's yeah. one of the houses and that he And he died while we were shooting it, so then it felt extra creepy. And then there were fires while we were shooting. There was ash falling outside. and it, We had some, like, weird moments on set, right? <laughs> like, we're creepy it, it was, it was I, pictures I, of a real, uh, real quick, it was a picture of a guy. <laughs> Pictures of this guy growing up, like from when he was a little kid and he went to college with his friends. The guy who owned the house. I don't know who this dude is. It was like a little room and it was really, it was really, I got really the pictures fascinated. Pictures of Nicholson and the shining it was from weird. the 30s up until the 60s. Yeah. You don't know if he was dead and the, the parents made a shrine of him. I didn't know what, like the room, it was still kind of like how he Probably grew that. Up you know it's what I'm talking like, about, right? The yeah, room. and you wonder every day, you're like, who is that guy? <laughs> Where is that guy? But also you have John Malkovich walking around with like a shotgun <laughs> at all times. And talking to birds at all yeah, times. Yeah, so he's like crafty. This, like, is, this is know, not what we're not filming. Nothing. Yeah, when we're he's not got filming. A shotgun. Why? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I think I think I had a bit of fun with trapping those guys a bit like they were trapped in the movie. Yeah. And and they did kind of um did develop you know? intent relationship and were you know, having fun, arguing, all everything. But did you go up to John and you were like, hey, John, to make this really work, I need you to, at all times, walk around with a shotgun and talk to birds? I didn't have to. Filming? That came very natural. That was, I mean, yeah, that was just a part of him. him. Yeah. Yeah. It literally became a part of him. And like I said, he'd be at Crafty getting a nut, like just like one cashew, and he's just got a big-ass shotgun. Oh, I didn't realize it until I saw the film that I thought he was talking to the birds for the film. It just confused me. I was like, oh, you really did that in the movie? Because he was just doing it constantly. Like, you were like, cut, and y'all be, be working on stuff, and we need to do this, and him like, but what? Like, and they would talk back. They would talk they back to him. I think they're overdoing <laughs> it a bit. I think they're overdoing no, it No, we're not. Yes, you are. No. He had a connection with the yeah, birds. Like, really they, they would talk back. Like, he's amazing with animals. Like, in a good way. <laughs> I'm saying this all in a positive way. Like, and, love and, John. And, but it was, it was, he, and he loves really basketball. With bitmojis too. Great with bitmojis. Yes, him and Jackie Weaver made me get bitmoji. And Jackie still sends me bitmojis all the time. It's my, <laughs> it's my favorite thing to get from her. John Malkovich texts bitmojis? All bitmojis. He would come over to me and be like, is this a funny one to send to my wife? And I'd be like, <laughs> uh, yeah, John Malkovich. <laughs> He's like the coolest, most knowledgeable person about everything. I was like, how do you yeah. know everything? It's amazing. So it actually sounds like as much as a, this is a, a tense thriller, you guys all had a really fun time while you were making it. We actually yeah, really did. did, yeah. <laughs> like thinking about all the yeah, well, I, I think we had no choice. I, I think out of anything I've done, you know, kind of where you just go to your own trailers and that's what it was. I, I don't know if you did it on purpose where the trailers were so fun. Okay. She did. Yeah. She did. Where we had to be a genius. <laughs> right. yeah. genius right I knew here. you were doing it on purpose when course, when course, Kels and I were always at the trailer, you just the two of us. Yeah, you would send them off alone and then like, the rest why, of us. Why are we house? here today? Why are we? It was just 12 yeah. hours of us hanging out. To try to get a connection between you two because your characters are supposed to. It was to... hard, but we formed a connection. <laughs> are you going to talk more about this or? Uh, no? Okay. Well, you can't, I, now I, I'm a shark, I, I, I see blood, I no want to know what's going on. No spoilers. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. But I mean, for sure, for sure, there was an attempt to, to s kind of put these guys in a position which was slightly similar to the one they were in the movie, and it worked. And that At least to a point. And that probably starts with shooting it in an actual house rather than choosing a studio over, over a house where they could have had dressing rooms near, right near where the set was. Now you've got them all the way down into the woods. I like locations. I like the realness. I like that there are things that you can't control and that, you know, there's a tap that's not working. I like that it's not, that you, that you are faced with something which, isn't, which hasn't been designed in advance. I love that. Yeah, and it was really cool because we were in that house the whole time. We got to shoot in order, which I've never done before in my life. So that was that was crazy and intense. What did you shoot? Sh shooting in order. And we didn't quite shoot, shoot in order, what? but sort of. 
In I order. Oh, oh, yeah, order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah, no. Sorry, I'm Australian. That's Coastline, we thank you so much. That's my bad. I, I thought was, she said well, auto. Like, I thought, I thought like she said auto. It's yeah. a new yeah. film. Version. I'm, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I was just going to let it go <laughs> and be like, thank you. I was very happy he asked. <laughs> 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 uh, you know, there's some wonderful sequences in the film where uh, Sandra Bullock is sort of going down river with these two children. How how difficult were those sequences to, to shoot? They're they're gorgeous and, and tense. Well, I mean, <clears throat> she, we were in a, on a pretty ferocious river, and it was Sandra and two small kids in, in that river in a small boat, and that was tricky and difficult. And it wasn't dangerous, but it felt dangerous. I mean, that river is insane. I'm sorry, rude guys. What are you whispering about back there? We're just saying that like I've she uh, put Sandra Bullock in a real, real ferocious <laughs> river, like dangerous. <laughs> we, like, yeah, I said it me and her have called that she's <laughs> sick from day one. We're like, yo, dude, this is all for like we're all in the and then just hearing you confirm all these things like I that think, you didn't shoot in, like yeah, a green screen had river. She like, put her you know in a boat with she's two like, kids and was just like, we put them in the most ferocious. Take one. White water rafting. Is this how you normally work, Suzanne? She's our national treasure. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. But is, is part of that being a national treasure mean uh, torturing your actors? I'm not torturing. Talk? No, no, no. I'm not torturing <laughs> anyone. Well, you know, so, but see, that's what, what I'm saying. We what didn't, are you talking about? We didn't realize you what she was doing to... until, like, it's just funny I, that you I had to, to like, it. take some time off from my family and stuff. Because I was like, am I losing my mind? Like, for a minute, I <laughs> thought I was losing it. Because it was so intense. And then when we could do, start doing interviews, like, yeah, I did it on purpose. It was like, what? <laughs> it's like go home to your family and you're just like there's these photos I, I, in the sky I, I, and I need to know who I'm this guy you, is because I had to learn all my character had to really understand what was going on so like that was another thing John Malkovich I, it was words I didn't understand I would call it like he would call his wife like um baby uh, Umbrell doesn't understand what this means could you explain him with this mythology and she would break it down like oh this is a real thing yeah. We all do a phenomenal Malkovich. John I just Malkovich. want to point that out. Is it impossible to like not do an impression of him once you start talking to him? He's Go so ahead. Specific? I, I'm the only one that can't do an impression of him. It's my accent. Go ahead. He had one line he said. This is a close-up. <laughs> <laughs> he, oh, he made our Steadicam op piss his pants because he's charging around with a shotgun. Tensions are high. And the Steadicam guy is like right on him. And he goes, this is a close-up. This is And we're like, oh, my God. And the city cam guy's like, OK. Like, I think he, is he still around? <laughs> it was I one scene I almost couldn't get through. And it wasn't even a oh, funny yeah. scene. Oh, Bugbear? Like, just hear John Mac Bugbear. He, Ma it was all he said, Bugbear, my ass. And just to hear John McAvoy, I kept looking at him saying, I kept bursting in laughter to the point. It was like, it felt like everybody was mad at me because I was in tears laughing. Like, I was John McAvoy to my bird, bird bad my, bird bad my ass. It was like. <laughs> Did he get it? Did he get why you were laughing? Or I like, thought it was just like, bro, like, is you doing it in your John yes, McAvoy voice? Yes, he did. Bird bad my ass. It was like. <laughs> I was like dying laughing. Uh, what was the toughest part of the movie to shoot? Oh, hanging out with this crew? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the river. The river was, yeah. I mean, like, in terms of logistic, practicals, um, all of that, that was a tough one. But, but I want to say that everything in the house with these guys, because it, it needs to be, every detail of it needs to be real and all the tensions going on, it has to have that kind of sense of, of you know, you can't really cheat. And and nobody can cheat. And so 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 when there's like a group of of of, of amazing actors and all of these guys and everybody who's not in this studio, today, all they're all amazing actors. Then you're gonna have to kind of balance it and figure it out so that every one of them gets some real air and some real space and some real identity. So there's story tracks too. You can't really lose anybody, even if you're focusing on one. You have to know when to cut back, which means making sure that you get all this different coverage to have in the in the editing room, I would imagine. Yeah, but they are just fantastic actors. I mean, and, you know, if I mean, if we kind of forget all the fun and the, uh, for a moment, they are just, every one of these guys are just so interesting and so personal and so creative. So it was, it was a real pleasure, even if they don't think so. I felt too. Well, I like watching everybody process too, real quick. Like it was fun watching every, when it was, you know, a certain scenes in the house was all of us doing something together and watching every actor kind of getting their own 
get back into the mode or whatever the situation is. I thought that was really fascinating. I feel like I learned a lot from everybody, to be and quite honest with you. cool about that is that a lot of times you're, you're like, I'm in a movie with so-and-so, but you've never done scenes together. And in this, you, you're you're really in a movie with all of these amazing people. You're It's 12 of us in a room, so you really got to interact with all of the people that you're excited to be in this movie with. So. Yeah, how did you cover those scenes where there's 12 of them in a room? Were you just shooting those scenes over and over again with a couple different cameras, or were some people allowed to leave if they weren't? On no. screen for that? No, no, no. no. You come in, Kells. No, but I mean, the thing is, the thing, the, the thing you need to, you need to, out of, I mean, out of respect for everyone, you don't, somebody doesn't leave because he's not in a shot, he or she is not in a shot. They stay there and everybody needs to be very loyal and very, um, I mean, actually very generous to everyone else for, for, for that to work, for a group of actors to work in the same room. Everybody needs to be incredibly generous, and, and they all were. Every single one of, of them were super generous, super engaged at all times. Cause I thought, saw you throw a mic up a second ago when they were talking about working with all the actors in this room. Was there something that you uh, were going to throw in there? Uh, no. No, I mean, I'm still friends with all these actors in the room, so that's cool. <laughs> San San Sandy B. picked out my daughter's Christmas gift yesterday. Oh, yeah? What? what? Oh, we can't say what it is. I can't say it yet. Yeah, it's not, I don't want it, but... Right. It's cool. How did that? How did that happen? Cause she texted me. She was like, "Yo, I'm about to make this FAO Schwartz run. Like, do you want to roll and grab some for for your daughter?" I was like, "Yeah." And she was like, "How old is she again?" I was like, nine. She was like, "Yeah, preteens aren't trying to get down with like FAO Schwartz, so we got to switch up the plan." And then I was like, "Cartier bracelet or something like that." And then she's like, nine, so it's not that cool to her yet. You know what I mean? So we were trying to figure something out. And then I like stopped her and I was like, dude, stop. You don't have to send me like screenshots of gifts like you're like doing a giant movie premiere tomorrow. You know what I mean? Like it's like <laughs> you're way cooler than I am. Like, you know, but yeah, she had, but we ended up finding a solution. But that wasn't what I was going to say. I don't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> but I, I, I've, I've had so many good times on set. But I like because she would always go in and out of, I don't know, keeping us in a you know, in a mood and then sometimes breaking it, but like one time, like I'll never forget, I was like sitting there and I was real nervous and she came up, she was like, oh, I want to change something, um, uh, to fix that. And I was like, what? Uh, and she was like this, and I was like, M my face? And she was like, she was like yeah, yes, um, I, don't, I don't like it. <laughs> and there was my a favorite thing German is, you, don't, you don't say, you don't say cut, you say, uh, if you like it, Thank you. Say, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That, you know, it's like oh, you really? keep going, yeah. you keep going, keep going, keep going. You know, take after take after take, and you don't stop and know that you got it until you hear a thank you. Yeah. yeah. You wait for your thank you. Yeah. How did that? How did that? How did that start for you? I don't know. I I think cut is kind of brutal, and and cut yeah. means yeah, we've got, we've taken, we're gonna go again, and then and then I kind of go. It just happened instinctively, and then it kind of go, wow, this was great. Thank you so much. So that's how it came, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's get some questions for our audience. Who's a question? Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks so much for being here today. Uh, I have tickets to the screening tonight. I hope I can get in. Uh, I want to ask you, Danielle, you played a rapper in a great movie called Patty Cakes. I just want to know, did you and MGK ever throw down like a cypher going on set? Ooh. And also, did uh, Machine Gun Kelly, did it influence your writing at all? playing a character in this insane movie? Uh, we we did not. I'm, I'm far too intimidated. I can't freestyle or anything I mean, like that. we've had drinks together and like party together. Yeah. We we've just gotten to the, right at the brink of busting out a freestyle. Haven't actually mm -hmm. done it, because I think he terrifies me. He, mm. He'd kill me. There's he'd slaughter time. me. I shouldn't, I shouldn't put myself in that position. <laughs> I, I, wasn't, I wasn't writing that much during that filming of that movie. I was just reading. It was a lot of time, yeah. It was, it was, I was, I was, you know, dude, I was, I, we were in the house for too long and the people around me were too cool. I just wanted to talk to everybody. Everyone was like real open and like just talking all the time. So it was cool. Well, you had your guitar too, though, sometimes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would always play like my guitar or do that. I guess I was writing. I'm a liar. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you mean we wrote that something no. <laughs> up? Uh, next question. Hi. Um, were there any other processes necessary to prepare for your roles besides just being in a really creepy house? Well, I know I would say for me at first, I can't, I think I went into it way more casual than I should have. And then once I, once you challenged me, you know, the real big information thing, I really had to like say, all right, Ray, you got to really become Charlie. I can't really like 
try to jump in and out of it. So I say for the last of whatever I had to do, I became Charlie. And it took like a few weeks to get out of Charlie. And I'm like, he's a weirdo. I don't want to be like this for the rest of my life. Uh, <laughs> I'm way more secure than this. Uh, but I had to own them. And that, once again, it goes back to what you were saying that we, I think you did a good job of, and once we found a real of it, you, you, I could tell when you knew that I got to that place, like, okay, he, he gets it. Um, but that was the first time I've been challenged like that. I've always been able to kind of cheat that a little bit, especially being a comic and I've done characters and stuff, so I've been able to do in and out. But this is the first time as an actor I had to be like, no, you have to become this, you have to believe what's happening and, and run with it like that, yeah. Uh, next, I think our last question, what do we got? Hi. So I have an online question from Serena and she said, hypothetically speaking, if you all were in this house for real, who would be the last person standing? Mm. Me. Good answer. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> Definitely not me. If you don't I think would, I'm, I'm killing that thing and getting away, <laughs> you are bugging. Like, I'm still standing here I for sure. I really feel like you I, and I would have done I the same exact thing. I think, thing. It's, I think it's teamwork. I think it's team. I think we're all still, I think we're all still here. That's a really good question, yeah. and I, yeah. that's a question I would love to have somebody ask us after they see the movie, yeah. once you understand what that is. It would be me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's very, well, it's yeah, very it would be it's genius very, yeah. right here. Like, it, yeah. it'd be, I mean, what about Sandy, guys? No? Oh, yeah, yo, dude, oh, team well, leader, is, dude. I mean, that's, we're that's, not going to yeah. reveal anything yeah. kind of, but... Um, I'm not trying to, I'm just, we're saying if Sandra this is reality. Sandra definitely has the capacity to be the one kind of getting out of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder who would survive outside of that. But that's, like I said, that's a whole nother. I've, have, I've, I've watched this three times. I was telling her, Susan, her, I'm like, I've overanalyzed it now. Like, where it's like, oh, yeah, see, if you've got a balance of both, maybe. You know, so it's a lot of it's a lot of things I've thought. I wear glasses, maybe I should wear them. Just a lot. I've thought about a lot of stuff. <laughs> it's very, it's very I always weird. thought that maybe drugs, <laughs> like narcotics, would help or like something that releases the, like, yeah. psilocybin. Yeah. Because you kind of are made to, in a, you're like kind of in an altered state. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah. So maybe you would be able to. I don't. Do you read? Yeah. Do you watch they horror movies when you them. trip? I don't do that. That sounds terrifying. But see, but but that's. What, but he's talking, she's talking about how it relates to this though. How okay, fair. Specifically yeah. This specifically. yeah. So when you see it, you'll when you see it. understand. Yeah. That but makes very I interesting. I really feel that. like we take that route. Yeah. In if you like, like, yeah, drops a couple tabs of acid and like just look at it. Yeah. <laughs> You're not all that either. So, so characters, you know, like guys, I swear. Mac, really you see I think we're spraying a bit here. You want to pull them back on track? Yeah, I do. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. I'll let you do it. Sorry. Sorry. You're the director. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like I really don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, guys, congratulations on the film. It premieres on Thank Netflix fri this Friday, right, at 3 in, the, 3 in the morning. It'll be up there all over the world, and people can check it out. And it's it's really great. You guys are amazing in it. It's a wonderful, another wonderful film by you, and it's uh, pretty terrifying. Everybody give them a big round of applause. Let's hear it.